by TV shows like Breaking Bad and The Wire, which featured drug dealers using cheap phones they would later dispose of or burn to avoid detection. In today's teen parlance, a burner phone can be a prepaid cell phone or any out-of-service phone they can still get to work on Wi-Fi. The buyer will typically get a prepaid phone with credit loaded onto it, on which they can dispose of whenever they please. Yes, a burner phone number can be traced. All mobile phones, including prepaid ones and burner apps, go through cellular carrier or virtual number operator. Your identity can be tracked through call logs, data usage, approximate location, and text messages. Only one problem, you would need to know the source before you can trace its origins. Now I found this on insider.com. Teens are using burner phones in an attempt to keep their social lives a secret from their parents. A new report from the Wall Street Journal details the lengths some will go in order to stay connected. The phones don't necessarily need costly plans. Some teams use the burners when connected to Wi-Fi to circumvent data charges. One parent told the Wall Street Journal that their daughter got phones from friends when they took their device away. So in my, in my opinion, 14 years of age is when kids seem to be getting cell phones nowadays. Abby was not allowed to have a cell phone. Her mother said that she was too young. It's not that crazy to think that Abby and Libby had burner phones with apps such as Snapchat and POF created under fake identities. This is not uncommon. With both girls possibly communicating with BG on burner phones or vaulted apps registered under fake identities, without the actual burner phones in possession and fake accounts located, they would be untraceable. I believe this is possible. It may be the reason BG missed Libby's phone. He collected both of the girls' burner phones without realizing. The girls could easily be using both fake and real Snapchat accounts at the same time while BG was tracking the girls on his own burner phone. If this theory is true, it could give credibility to a catfish theory. Now this is from thepressenterprise.com. A San Jacinto man was sentenced Friday, October 18th, to consecutive life terms for a thrill kill when he lured and murdered a Jan Cinto boxer by posing behind a fictional woman's Facebook page. Manuel Edmundo Guzman Jr., 19, confessed Friday for the first time that he killed Eddie Leal, 23, of San Jacinto, when Leal arranged to meet a woman on a fake Facebook profile named Rebecca. Now this video is just as much a warning to parents as it is a theory regarding this Delphi murder case. Thank you for watching. <laughs>